Hello everyone, my name is John Paul, founder of Day Trade to Win. For over 10 years, we've been educating traders on how to use price action to trade the markets using our proprietary indicators and systems. This video will cover exactly how to download, install, and configure your charts, the dome, and all the important features NinjaTrader 8 has to offer, especially for those traders who are new. If you like our videos, be sure to subscribe to the Day Trade to Win YouTube channel and don't miss out on the latest tips and trading expertise. Remember, trading is risky and it's not for everyone. Consult with a licensed broker to make sure that trading is right for you. This video is for NinjaTrader 8. It's a how-to reference that covers everything from installation to configuration. This is how we set up the platform at daytradetowin.com, which is the site that you see right here. So to download NinjaTrader 8, let's go to the NinjaTrader website. So go up here in the address bar of your browser to ninjatrader.com. Here on the NinjaTrader page, you should see a place where you can download the platform. So you can type in your email address. In this case, we're using our support email for day trade to win. Please use your own email. Next, select the NinjaTrader 8 version. Click on download. Save file. If you're using a different browser, you'll have a different message. Once it's downloaded, you can run the installer. The file name for the installer should be ninjatrader.install.msi. Proceed through the NinjaTrader 8 installation steps as you would any other program by clicking the next button, agreeing to the terms of service, and optionally you can configure the skin. Now the skin is the appearance of the NinjaTrader application. I prefer a dark skin. We use it throughout the website. If you like a lighter interface, you can pick a lighter color such as light or slate light. We're going to proceed with slate gray, the default skin, and the default installation directory. Once NinjaTrader has completed installation, you should see two different NinjaTrader icons on your desktop. This one here is 64-bit. We will be using this one primarily. This one here is the 32-bit version. In most cases, you can delete this 32-bit version. We like the 64-bit version because it can take advantage of your computer resources to a better scale than this 32-bit version. So. We can go ahead and delete this, or you can leave both on. Some people like to have both because if there's an issue with 64-bit, you might be able to troubleshoot in 32-bit. So, But for our purposes here in this video, let's get rid of the 32-bit. Move this up here so things look nice. With NinjaTrader 8 64-bit installed, we can go ahead and run the program for the first time. So double-click on the icon. It's possible that you'll see a Windows firewall message such as this one. You can go ahead and click allow access unless you want to configure this differently. Because we're configuring NinjaTrader for the first time, this is the first run of NinjaTrader after an install, we get this message here that says get connected. This is asking us to connect to a live data feed. Now NinjaTrader may be different than other platforms you're used to because it does not come with the data feed by default. In case you are unaware, a data feed is how you access real-time market data. We don't have a connection to input here. A connection is really a username and a password. So we're going to go ahead and skip this step. I recommend that you do the same because later on you'll see how to apply a data feed. So with NinjaTrader having just launched for the first time, you'll see this getting started screen in the foreground. This is not necessary, so click on Do Not Show Again and click on Close. Now we are left with the NinjaTrader Control Center. So this is the main screen that you'll use to open charts, to access various tools, and so on. I recommend, if your screen allows, to drag this out so that none of the uh, menu buttons here are hidden at all. As mentioned earlier, NinjaTrader 8 is best used with live data, and you must request a data feed from NinjaTrader, or you can also ask for help from us, and then we can help you get that data feed. So on our website, daytradetowin.com, you can request a data feed 
by going over to the courses and software menu item and selecting simulator. Complete this, hit get simulator, and check your email. Also, of course, you can use the NinjaTrader website to request a data feed. This is NinjaTrader's page to request a live data feed. The URL is ninjatrader.com slash free live data. You may need to capitalize the F, the L, and the D in those words. Complete this form, click submit, and then you'll get a data feed there as well. Now let's set up a data feed. To set up the data feed, you go to the connections menu, configure, scroll down until you see NinjaTrader Continuum, double click, make sure that NinjaTrader Continuum is selected in the bottom left panel, and then in the right panel, enter in the username and password. Typically, the data feed is delivered via email, and again, the data feed consists of just a username and a password, at least for these free live demos. Uh, if you were to trade with an actual trading account that's tied in with a broker, you would follow the instructions that you get from your broker, select the appropriate uh, provider here, as they're called, and configure it as described in the email you get from your broker. But again, this is a free data feed. This data feed will last for about two weeks or 14 consecutive days from the date issued, and that's what we're going to apply right now. So we're going to copy the username, and this would be the same procedure if you were copying and pasting this from your email. So we can highlight the username, right click, copy, go into the username box here in NinjaTrader, right click, paste, do the same for the password. I'm going to use control C as in cat and control V as in Victor to paste in the password. Those are keyboard shortcuts rather than using the mouse. And now that we have this data feed configured, it is a demo, we're gonna leave that checked, we can click on OK. This is a typical disclaimer message that comes up. You can click on OK. And from this point forward, whenever you start up NinjaTrader, you can connect to the data feed by going to Connections and then clicking on the name of the provider or the data feed that we had set up. Again, that's NinjaTrader Continuum. And we see that it's yellow, that means it's in the process of connecting. When it connects, it should turn green, and you may also hear a sound. Now that it's green, we can confirm that we are connected. At this point, we can open up a chart, a futures chart really, and see live data coming in. If we had not set up this feed and opened a chart, the chart would be pretty much blank or have historical data, which isn't really as useful to someone who wants to learn how to day trade. To learn how to day trade, you really should be practicing with real-time data. And that's what we're going to look at now, how to use the live data on a chart. So we need to set up that chart first. To open a chart, go to New Chart. In the Instrument box, select Futures and select the market you'd like to open. Why are we using the Futures? because the data feed that we set up only works for futures. At this time, there is no free data feed that works for real-time stock quotes. Um, there is one for Forex, which we can help you with if you email us at support at daytradetowin.com. Uh, but for now, in this video, we're going to be focusing on futures, and in particular, the E-mini S&P 500 market. That is abbreviated as ES. Now this 0320 refers to the contract period being traded. If you watch this video in the future, you might be looking at ES0620 or ES0920 or ES1220 or ES0321. This all depends on when you watch the video and what the current contract period is. In futures, markets roll over on a quarterly basis. So you always want to make sure that you're trading the correct and active futures contract. So for right now, this is correct. And later in this video, we're going to go over how to ensure that you're trading the correct contract period. So select ES0320. And now we have a bunch of settings displayed. So we see the type of chart. It's a minute chart. That's fine for this demonstration. We're going to change this value to five. This means that we're going to be looking at a five minute chart. Days to load, I typically recommend about 14 days. 
This way you can look at about two weeks of data. Now this two weeks doesn't really have anything to do with the two weeks of futures data that you're given with the data feed. This is just how much of a picture you want to see historically. You can go up to 30, uh, maybe beyond that, but I wouldn't go too far beyond that because it can take a while to download the data. And certainly if you're using other chart types like a tick chart or a range chart, keep the value at three, which I believe is the default because those tick and range charts can download a lot of data. So for a minute chart, keep this at five if you're going to be using methods that work on a five minute chart, like many of our methods at day trade to win and keep days to load at about 14 because that's a reasonable picture to look at in terms of historical market data. After you're satisfied with these settings, and we really don't configure many others except for this one down here, which we'll cover later on. Uh, click on OK. And then if you're connected to the data feed, you should see a chart load up. Now that we have a chart in front of us, we should go over a few important concepts. As you can see, we have some price movement on the right side of the chart. In fact, this whole vertical axis consists of price. So these are all price values that you see as I hover my mouse over the price axis. This is the E-mini S&P 500 market abbreviated as ES with the contract period 0320. The E-mini has increments of 0.25. So the smallest the market can move is 0.25 points. Each 0.25 is also called a tick. And as I zoom in, you can see each tick. So you have here, for example, 2783.25, and the next value price can reach would be this value here at 0.5, then 0.75, and then the next whole number, and so on. So it counts up and down in quarter points. For the E-mini S&P, each tick is worth $12.50 currently. That's US dollars. In terms of defining what a point is, that's four ticks. So you take the $12.50, multiply that by four, and you get $50. So from 2750 to 2751, there it is, that would be equivalent to $50 if you had made that in profit. Also, if you had placed a trade and the trade went against you and you had a loss, you would have lost $50. Uh, also, you have broker costs that factor into trading. So for every trade, whether you win or lose, you have to essentially pay the broker something. But more on that later. Now that you understand this vertical axis, we can look at the bottom axis here, this horizontal axis. This is time. If you recall in the last step, we configured a five minute chart. And you can see the current chart time frame up here. Note that there are many other types of charts that you can easily switch to here. For example, you could jump to a tick chart uh, using the value 200 if you clicked on this value here. And you could really see a prolonged period of time if you did a day chart, for example, with all of these dates here on the bottom and the uh, monthly abbreviation here. But as mentioned previously, we often use a five minute chart for most things. We do have a few scalping methods that are available in our mentorship program. That's an eight week class where we teach you everything and you get all courses and software in one complete package. So now that you understand the axes, we can look at these red and green rectangles. Now these are called candles and they're also called bars. You can switch between the different chart types up here at the top, but typically we stick with a candlestick chart because we find it the easiest to use. So over time, price will move up and down and that's why you have this procession of candles across the chart. Currently, price is trading at around 2735.25 or so and that's fluctuating because we are connected to a real-time data feed and the market is open. If either one of those conditions were not present, there wouldn't be any moving price activity. So with this chart in front of us, we can take a closer look at these candles. Take this candle, for instance, here that occurred at 1350. Now, 
the, pro the time axis on the bottom uses 24 hour time or military time. So if we take 1350, we know that noon in 24 hour time is the same as it is in regular time or local time. So this is actually 12 o'clock PM. So we are in the afternoon time period here, and this is an hour at 1300. So this would be equivalent to one o'clock PM local time and so on. This would be two and, and so on. So if you ever have a question about 24 hour time or military time, we have some information on our website. We'd be more than happy to help you with. Also, there are a number, number of online resources that explain how 24 hour time works. Uh, but yes, you have to use 24 hour time in Ninja Trader. It's common among most trading platforms. Going back to this candle here, this is at uh, 1 50 PM local time or 13 50, 24 hour time. This is a green candle, which means that it closed higher than it opened. So we can tell based on the color that it opened here and closed here. This candle wick, which is this line that penetrates the candle shows the overall price range. I'm going to switch to a different cursor here so that you can see better, hopefully. Meaning that price traveled from here to here over the course of five minutes because this is a five minute chart. So each candle represents five minutes of price activity or as we like to call it, price action. Again, this is where the candle opened here at the bottom and this is where the candle closed here at the top, therefore it's green. Now the next candle happened to be red. So we know that this candle closed lower than it opened. So it must have opened here and then closed down here at the bottom. Therefore it was colored red. So these candles as they're plotting in real time, here's the current plotting candle over here, will change color. For example, if this price were to suddenly drop below this level and this, then this closed off at the end of the five minute period, this candle would turn red and so on. So the current plotting candle is all the way to the right of the chart. Within NinjaTrader, you can scroll back in time by using your mouse wheel. If you're using a mouse that has a wheel, if you're using a laptop, you can use the scroll bar here on the bottom, click, hold and drag this slider backwards. Note that on some small screens, you may want to reposition the chart by dragging it up. You can reposition the chart however you want. It's important to have full access to the bottom of the chart. You should see the tab indicating the market here as well. So scroll all the way back. This is where the historic information comes into play that we configured in the last setting. So I believe we used 14 days so we can go back about two weeks to see what occurred. Note that if we want to jump ahead to the current plotting candle, you have this arrow in the upper right corner of the chart, click on that and you'll instantly jump to the current plotting candle. It's important you look at the current plotting candle when you're trading live so you know what price is presently doing, otherwise you're using old data that might mislead you. You can see that I'm quite zoomed into the chart. If I wanted to zoom in further, I would click, hold, and drag the time axis and these candles would get much larger. In a way, the same can be done using the price axis by clicking, holding, and dragging up but it's easy to mess up the chart so that you lose sight of what's important. If that happens, look to the upper right of the chart and you should see the letter F. We call this the focus button. If you click on the F as in Frank, price is refocused. You can see the chart better. It almost fixes the issue. So if you were to get a very compact view of the chart and distort it again, for example, this way, click on the F and then drag into the chart. There's another feature worth enabling. If you right click on the chart and go to properties, you'll see this show date range, check it and click on okay. In the upper left of the chart, you'll see exactly the time period you're looking at from the left to the right of the chart. So as you can see, as we scroll back in time, this display gets updated automatically. Now this is a video, so you might not be able to make out this small text, but if you do this on your own, you'll see exactly what I mean. 
While I'm at it, it's important to point out a quick fix for a problem that sometimes occurs with NinjaTrader. You may see gaps in data. Notice how there's a bar here and there's another bar here and there's really no connection between the two. This can occur uh, during the early morning periods at times. Also, when your computer is off and you restart NinjaTrader, you might have a loss of data. There is a way to fill in the missing data that usually works. So whenever you start up NinjaTrader and you have a chart in front of you, you might want to perform this step. So this step should fill in this missing data. So to perform the steps, right click on the chart and go to reload all historical data. And as you can see, the data is filled in. And you wanna check usually in the morning time because if your computer is off or your NinjaTrader platform is closed, you might not get all that data back filled in when you connect to the data feed. Remember the data feed is connected to via the control center by going to connections and clicking on the appropriate data feed. That usually fills in the data, but it doesn't always work and there might be inconsistencies. And for some trading systems, you want to make sure that you have as much data as possible and there are no gaps. Aside from this video, you should go to our website, daytradetowin.com click on the get started menu item and select the setup information menu item. This will bring you to a page that has a number of important topics, many of which we will go over in this video. And you can click on the topic that you are interested in and it will jump to the section and explain what you need to do. So this is a big how to area for common ninja trader things. In addition, please check out our get started guide because if you fill this out, you'll get a PDF full of useful information on how we approach day trading, much of which is presented in this video, but it's still a useful guide to get as is a PDF and you can take it with you. Next, let's discuss indicators. What are indicators? They are trading tools that get installed into the trading platform. And generally people do this so that they can have additional information provided to them that will help them trade. These can be visual aids, they can be signals that tell you when and how to place a trade. We have a free indicator available here on our downloads page. So go to courses and software downloads and you'll see this downloads page. This free indicator that we have is a news indicator that presents a number of news events on the chart. And this can be useful because oftentimes scheduled news events can impact the market causing a lot of volatility for some traders it's best to stay out when that occurs so you have sort of an early warning of when you might want to hold back on trading or if you know a particular trading method that may work well with news events you can go ahead and trade that news event because you know ahead of time when it's scheduled to be so it's very useful to have these news events displayed on the chart for you instead of having them available in a separate browser window. So we have instructions here for how to install the indicator, but we're going to go ahead and do that in this video. So firstly, you want to download the indicator. If you haven't done so already, input your information, get the download link. I've gone ahead and done that already, and I've downloaded the indicator. Now, in NinjaTrader, indicators are zip files, dot zip is the file extension in windows so in your browser you might want to open up your downloads area as you can see this is the name of our news indicator file dttw8 news 4t.zip so it's important to note where you download your indicators to because when you go to import them into NinjaTrader, NinjaTrader will ask you, well, where's the indicator located? And you need to know where that is. So if you ever need to navigate to the downloads folder in a regular Windows window for file navigation, you can click on this downloads button and your browser should have downloaded the download in this folder. So that is the indicator right there that we are going to import. Note that the file extension may be hidden because that's typically the default setting in Windows 10, but the full file name is indeed dttw 8 news 40zip zip And again, we're importing this indicator so that we can use it. Go to Tools, go to Import, go to NinjaScript Add-on. You may pause this video if you feel I'm going too fast. Eventually you should see a file open dialog window and here it is. 
it's defaulting to this Ninja Trader path. Again, we already copied the path, so we can right click and go to paste and jump right to that downloads folder. Let's use the enter key on the keyboard. And here's the indicator to import. But if that last step uh, was uh, a little bit complicated, you can go to the downloads folder here and you'll end up in the same place. So with the indicator selected, click on open. This is a typical message. Click on OK. And click OK to this message as well. Now the indicator has been successfully imported. Providing this indicator does not have additional licensing instructions, which is common with indicators that you purchase, you can go ahead and add the indicator to the chart. But before I do that, let's just show you how to uninstall indicators. To uninstall an indicator, you would go to Tools, Remove NinjaScript Assembly, select the indicator you want to uninstall, then click on Remove. But next, we're going to add the indicator to a chart. So let's go back to the chart that we configured earlier and we can add the indicator to that chart so we can minimize the control center. Let's close out the browser for now, close out the downloads area, and here we have the chart. By the way, in case you ever want to switch between different NinjaTrader windows, go to the Windows taskbar area at the bottom of your screen and select the thumbnail preview of the window that you want and click on it and the window should come up to the foreground. So the chart is now in the foreground. Now let's add the indicator to the chart. So right click the chart. Be sure to click the chart itself and not one of the candles. Go to indicators and then find the indicator that you downloaded. So in this case we know the indicator name is DTTW8 News 4T. So let's go to the D section because this is alphabetical. Indeed there is the indicator. Now double click on it and we can change some of the settings on the right hand side. Now because this indicator is new to you, you won't understand what these things mean necessarily, so we can go ahead and click on OK to apply the indicator with the default settings. As you can see the indicator is now applied. The indicator has many lines for news events. You might not want all of these lines, so we can get rid of some. Now the process I'm going to show you is going to be somewhat similar in case you ever have an indicator that you want to go back and customize. So this is how you customize an indicator after it has been applied to your chart. Right click the chart, go to indicators, select the indicator that you want to customize further, which would be the news indicator here in this case. Now the maximum events setting controls the amount of events displayed. Let's limit that to about five. And we can change the font size to something larger, for example, 14. If we click on apply, that will pretty much do the same thing as okay, but I really just click okay and that seems to work just fine. And there you have a larger font size with only five events. So that's a process you can use to configure indicators after the fact. While we're at it, let's add a couple of other popular indicators that we tend to use. One of them is the ATR or average true range. Double click on that. The other indicator we tend to use on bar charts or minute charts rather is the bar timer. So if you click on the ATR indicator, you can now customize the settings for the ATR. We typically use a period value of four. And if you don't know what that means, that's okay. I'll explain that in a moment. And the bar timer is pretty much good as is, so no need to configure that one. Click on OK, and you should see there are two indicators applied to the chart. Now, on the bottom, you can see that we have the ATR indicator. That's the squiggly line here indicating the average true range of the market. Uh, currently, the market is paused for the day, and the ATR happens to be at 8.55. So this will change as price moves up and down. We use the ATR as a measure of volatility. Volatility meaning how active the market is at uh, any moment. So the last four bars or last four candles are used for the current calculation. You can see that around this time there was a greater a period of greater volatility and therefore the ATR was higher at about 14. So this is something we use to calculate how much risk there is in the market 
and how to um, and something we also use for determining our profit targets and stop losses but more on those uh, items later so the bar timer is right here this would normally be a countdown of the current candle this being a five minute chart for every candle we would see a countdown from about five minutes or so the process to remove indicators is similar to adding them so to remove an indicator right click the chart go to indicators in this bottom left panel, click the indicator you want to remove. In this example, we can remove the news indicator. So that's already selected for us. So click on remove and then click on OK. And now that indicator is removed. So that's how you remove and add indicators. Let's go over how to license indicators. Indicators like the Atlas Line, Trade Scalper, and At the Open 2 offered via our courses and software page require specialized licensing steps as do other commercial indicators. We also have a number of indicators that are included in our eight week mentorship program. So for any of these indicators, you will eventually need to follow these steps. So go to the NinjaTrader Control Center, go to Help, Third Party Licensing. For vendor name, you will type in our vendor name And for user-defined ID, you type in your first, late, first name and last name. So John Smith, for example, here, and then click on Submit. This will produce a license. This portion here, by the way, is called the machine ID, but together we consider this to be a license. So make sure you select all of it with your mouse, right-click, copy. Now this is copied to your clipboard. Next, what you need to do to activate the indicators or indicator that you've purchased from us is to send us this license in an email. So I'm not going to actually open an email client, but what you would do is go to your email client. I'm going to use Notepad as an example. You would send an email to us at support at daytradetowin.com and you would say something like, hey, I'm looking to license my indicator or here's my license information and you would paste in that license. Let's stretch this out here so you can see. So your code or your license here will be unique. Send that to us and we will then promptly activate your license so that you can use the Atlas line at the Open2 Trade Scalper roadmap or whatever you have purchased. Let's take a look at a question that I recently received from one of the mentorship students that I have. She asks, hello, can you explain the difference between these orders? The limit order, the MIT order, the stop with the limit, the stop. So I will do a quick video to explain how these orders are used, how they're impacting the way we trade and which orders are best to trade with. All right, let's take a look at how these orders are used. What type of order you should be using for the purpose that you're trying to accomplish if you're buying the market, if you're using this as a stop loss, if you're entering and exiting for a specific reason. So I want to explain to you the reason to use a limit, a market if touched, a stop, a stop with a limit, and why and how you should be using it. What you're seeing here is the trade scalper for today december 18th 2019 these are the signals that everyone gets on their charts and if you look at where the current price is trading here is the superdome and here is where the price is live at the moment if i wanted to place an order to buy the market i want to be a buyer i want to go long i would have to do it in one of two ways I would either buy the market below where it's currently trading, which means that the market has to come back and retrace to that price. So it has to go down. If I wanted to, let's say, buy the market here, it has to come down and retrace down to that price. When that happens, you could only use a limit or a MIT. Limit is a limit order saying I want this exact price or better. An MIT works in the same way. It acts as a, 
a limit order where it has to come down and retrace down to it if you're going to be a buyer. But as soon as the market touches that price, what an MIT does is converts that order into a market order. So it's considered market if touched. So the idea behind using a limit order is that you don't have any slippage. You're saying, I want, for example, this exact price order submitted. or better. So when it comes down and touches this price, I want that specific price or a better price. If I instead used a market if touched, order, order submitted. as soon as it touches 3200 and a quarter, it converts itself into a market order. Both orders have to work in the same way. They order both canceled. have to come down to the market in order to be filled as a buyer. So a limit order or a market if touched order can only be placed below where the current price is trading. And the same thing is true. If I was going to be a seller, there was a sell signal right here for the trade scalper. If I was going to be a seller, I would use a limit order. Order submitted. Which is order canceled. Order submitted. Here. Anything above where the current market is trading in order to retrace back up to it. What I'm saying is I want this specific price or a better price or nothing. If I can't get this price, don't fill me. If I instead wanted to use a market if touched order, order submitted. which would look like this. Order can order submitted. In green here, MIT, this would mean I want to get filled as soon as it touches that price, convert it into a market order. Both work in the same way. It has to move up and retrace back up to these orders to be filled. One gives you no slippage. The other, you could have slippage. It could actually be a tick better in your favor. It could be um, the exact price. Here I have 3202 quarter, or it could be a better price uh, or a tick of slippage. So you have a little bit more variation of what could happen once it touches this MIT because it converts into a market order. Order canceled. A limit order instead is this price or nothing. Now the way that I order am able to choose between the two, besides going here into the properties of the Superdome, is I hold down the control key and left click. So if I hold down the control key, order submitted. it gives me a limit order. If I order left click, submitted. it's a limit order. If I hold down the control key, it's a limit order. Order canceled. Order canceled. Order submitted. Order submitted. And that's a market if touch. So remember, it's always order canceled. Putting the market order canceled. And a retracement to go long or to go short. Now, if we look at a stop order, a stop order is a little bit different because a stop order actually tells us that we are trying to buy or sell as the market moves in the same direction and it's called buying a stop or selling a stop. So if I was to place an order to go long as the market is trying to move higher, I cannot use a limit order because as soon as I use a limit or a market if touched, the reaction of the charting platform of the, the way this works is going to say, well, he's trying to get 3202 and there's a better price currently being traded. So you automatically get filled at this price when using a limit order or a market if touched above as a buyer. So you cannot use a limit order or a market if touched above where the price is currently trading. You have to use a stop. So the idea behind a stop order, order submitted. is saying, I want to go long once the market is moving in the same direction and filling me as it continues higher. Now a stop order converts into a market order. And you usually think about a stop order as a protective stop, right? Where you don't want to lose money but it's just an order. It doesn't matter if it's getting into the market or getting out of the market. You're using this stop order to get into the market for the first time as a buyer. To protect yourself, you would have a stop as a seller here 
to get out of the market once you're filled. So let me explain to you Order uh, a little bit further. I want to buy at 3200 right here. In order to buy at 3200 if I use a limit order, it's going to say, well, it's trading at a better price, so fill them at the better price. If I use a market if touched, it's trading at a better price, fill them at 3250 In order to buy above the market, I have to use a stop or a stop with a limit. A stop order, order submitted. is the middle mouse button. A stop with a limit is this. It's telling me that I want to buy at this price once the market moves up to it, meaning going in the same direction, but I want no slippage or I want one tick of slippage or I want two tick of slippage or I want no slippage here. When I click this check mark, it doesn't mean the number of contracts. It means the number of uh, ticks of slippage that you'll allow before you get filled. So if I click this at zero, order submitted. what I'm saying is once it touches this price, 3201.75, I want this price with no slippage. If I use a stop order, order canceled. As soon as it touches this price, it converts and says buy at market. So you can have a ticket slippage. You can have the exact price. You can have a better price, possibly. Don't count on it. So a stop order converts into a market, a stop with a limit. Order filled. Oops. Order canceled. A stop with a limit will Order say canceled. how many ticks of slippage will you want to give up to get filled? If you say one, that means it could be anywhere between 3202.50 and 3202.75. In between these two prices, you'll be filled, but nothing more than that. If I click zero, what you're saying is I want this price or nothing. Don't fill me long if I can't get this price. And the same thing is true here on the short side. If you want to sell, let me just close this up. Order filled. If you want to sell the market as it's moving down, meaning you're you're trying to jump on board the momentum in the same direction, you can't use a limit or a market because it's not retracing up to it. You're trying to get filled as the market is moving down in the same direction. So you have to use a order stop order, submitted. or you have to use a stop with a limit. And again. The stop with the limit says, once it touches this price, how many ticks of slippage will you allow before you get filled? If you say zero, you want this price or nothing. If you say one tick of slippage, you'll get between 3197.75 and 3198. And within these two, you should get filled. So that's what a stop with the limit. You're limiting the amount of slippage once it touches that price. If it touches the stop order, it says enter short at on a stop. It'll convert into a market order and you're filled short. As soon as it touches, it could be a good price, bad price, uh, but it converts into a market. So if I was to do this without using the ATM strategy here and I say, order canceled. I want to go short as the market is going down, maybe a tick or two from where it is, I would come here to the short side and I would say, I have my submitted. option. Once it touches this price, I'm going to be filled at market. Or I have the option to say a stop with a limit with however many ticks of slippage I am willing to give up in order to get filled. So once I get filled here, I'll just make the make the fill here. And as soon as it touches that price, as it comes down, order filled. So it touched the price and I got a fill. You can see 3200 short because it touched it converted into a market now if I was going to now manage this trade with targets and stops remember I'm short I sold the market I want to see the market go down so I can be successful and be profitable but if it goes against me and I'm losing money that means I have to buy it back so I'm gonna buy it back at a loss so as the market goes up here it's a loss and I have to use order a submitted. stop order or I have to use a stop with a limit. So as I'm losing money and the market is going against me, I'm going to get out of this trade on a stop. It's the same order. It's a stop to enter short and it's a stop to get me out. I'm just using the orders for different reasons. One is to enter and one is to exit at a loss. Now the same thing is true if order I was to filled. enter 
on a limit order. If I wanted to enter this trade, for example, long, I wanted to buy it on a order limit submitted. or a market if touched. So it has to retrace back down to me so I can be filled here long at 3200 order so filled now I'm filled here at 3200 because it retraced down to it it's not it's going in in a retracement to get me filled and now to protect myself I want to exit the market exit the market if it goes against me so if I, if I bought it that means I have to sell it and so now as the market goes down I have to buy it back at a loss or I have to acquire it back at a loss so I have to get rid of it at a loss so this here would be order submitted my stop loss I purchased it at this price as it retraced down to it if it goes against me I'm exiting the trade on a stop it's the same type of order a stop order to enter a stop order to exit or I could use the stop with a limit same thing once it hits my stop with a limit, I want this price or nothing. And my target, since now I want to see the market go up and be successful so I can make some money, it's going to be a retracement up, right? So I'm going to sell it with order a limit submitted. or a order submitted. market if touched order or a limit order here. So as the market goes up, it's retracing up to sell it just like it retraced down to buy it. If the market is going down, it's going in the same direction. I'm selling it as it moves in the same direction to protect myself from losing any more money. Or I'm selling it at a profit as it retraces up and I'm selling it as it goes up. Hopefully that'll help you with understanding market if touched limits and a stop with a limit. Stop with a limit is not really used quite that often because once you want to get out of a trade because it's losing money or you want to get into a trade you usually use a stop order a market if touched order is also good to enter especially with scalping and exiting order uh, very important when exiting the market because as soon as you realize that your profit has been made you want to get out of there and you want to take your profit and run you may get the exact price you may get a tick of slippage especially the e-mini s p has healthy and uh, healthy volatility and healthy liquidity uh, some markets that work slower you may get more slippage which is not good uh, but market of touched orders are good to get in and to get out without having to worry about the limit order trying and trying to get filled because you're in line in a queue let's take a look at templates now on ninja trader ninja trader has a feature called templates that let you save your chart settings this way you can apply a template rather than taking the time to go through and add all these indicators to your chart one by one. So to save a template for further use, you can right click on the chart, go to templates, go to save as, and give this a name that you'll remember in the future. So a format we often use is day trade to win. And because this is a five minute chart, we'll use the number five and then put MIN as an abbreviation, as an abbreviation for minute. And then we'll give it some other name that we can reference. Um, in this case, we'll just leave it as day trade to win five minute. Click on save and we have a template saved. So if you were to close this chart by mistake and you want to open a new chart and apply these settings, you can easily do so by applying or loading up the template. So let's go ahead and close this chart. Now we can go ahead and follow the usual steps to open a new chart. And again, what we're doing right now is figuring out or demonstrating rather how to apply a template. We're going to specify the value of five and ace load is 14. That part you'll have to configure. By the way, in case you want to go in and change those settings after the fact, right click data series, change this to from one to five, for example, or adjust the days to load historical data to, the, to a number that you want. Click on OK and that should update. Now let's go ahead and apply the template instead of adding those indicators one by one. So right click on the chart, templates, load, select the appropriate template. 
uh, if you have a number of templates configured for different chart types, make sure that you are applying, of course, the template that works for your chart. If you've configured a template, for example, for a one minute chart that might have indicators for that one minute chart. So you don't want to apply a one minute indicator to a five minute chart. You might get uh, signals that are of not much use. So here we go, load. And you can see that we have the uh, settings applied. Now let's go over another feature regarding saving settings. So you can actually save the values of indicators. So to do that, you need to right click, go to indicators, select the indicator you want to configure. We have this news indicator. Recall previously that we changed this to five to have fewer events on the chart and also the font size to 14. Now, if we want to save this, so all future instances of this news indicator have these values, we can go to template, this small text on the bottom right, template, save. Let's just save it as the default template, which means that whenever we apply the news indicator to a chart in the future, we have these settings with the maximum events as five and the check interval is rather, uh, not the check interval, the font size is 14 that will uh, apply in the future. So click on save. And now we have this as the default setting. So if we were open, if we were to open a new chart and apply the news indicator, you would see that the value for uh, the maximum events would be five and the font size would be 14. So again, two separate ways to save settings. You have the indicator settings themselves that need to be saved as a template. That's an indicator template. Then you of course have a chart template, which is something different, which is a collection of all the different indicators and chart configurations that you have. It should save the fact that you have a crosshair, for example, as well. And this, if you also have that uh, setting here, this uh, show date range, for example, if that's checked off, the template for the chart should save that. So two main ways to save your settings. There is a third setting you should be aware of, a third way to save information in NinjaTrader, and that is called a workspace. Now, a workspace is really a collection of charts and other windows that you have. So let's say you have a dynamic Superdome as part of your regular trading configuration. You might have this arranged like so with the chart over here, the dome over here. If you have another monitor, you might have a different chart on that monitor. Whatever the case may be, a workspace will save your layout, so to speak, so that the next time you open up NinjaTrader, that layout or workspace will load up and you won't have to go ahead and configure all these different charts and rearrange them. So we're going to be saving a workspace right now for the first time. Let's go to save as and give this a name. Day trade to win is fine. There we go. Now here's something really important. This is a common mistake a lot of traders make. When you close down NinjaTrader, the correct way to close down NinjaTrader is to leave your charts and other windows open and find the control center, which you would probably go down here for the taskbar, click the NinjaTrader icon, click the control center. The control center here comes to the foreground. Click the X in the upper right corner. It will ask you, do you want to save your workspace? Now this is a uh, common point of failure. So some people make the mistake of closing down the charts and the dome and all these other windows and then closing Ninja and then clicking yes. Do not do that. And this way you won't override your existing settings with something that you don't prefer, like having your charts closed down and missing uh, the layout that you once had. So that's really important. And we see a lot of traders making that mistake. Okay. So now here's something that's uh, rather important, uh, a maintenance item, if you will, that you should perform, I would say once every two weeks or so on average, what I'm referring to is synchronizing your computer clock time so that it's as accurate as possible. So this bar timer indicator that we have applied to the chart, you can see it counting down. This is based on your computer clock to a degree. So if your computer clock is a few seconds off or worse, it's possible that you might have inaccurate timing for the closing of each bar, which is the purpose of this bar timer indicator. And we do have more videos on the purpose of the bar timer and all that. but. Right now, let's focus on 
how to determine if your computer clock is off by some amount and then how to correct it and how to set up a way to maintain accurate time. So first, let's see how off this computer clock is. So to do that, I recommend using a website called time.is or time.is. So type this in, HTTPS, time.is. Let's get rid of this extra slash. There we go. All right, so exact time now. Your clock is 1.2 seconds behind. That's not too bad. Over time, a computer will naturally lose accuracy because of the battery when it's turned off. Uh, long explanation as to how that actually occurs, but trust me, it does occur. So you should perform this on a regular basis. To sync your computer clock with official time servers, you can follow these steps. Now, Windows has the ability to, like I just said, synchronize with official time servers. And you can navigate there through the computer clock area down here, but I'm going to show you the way I prefer to access the sync area. So hold down the Windows key on your keyboard if you have one, then press the R key, R is in run. This opens up the run command area. Now you're going to type in time date dot C P L. Hit enter and you have the date and time setting area. So we can sync the computer time to the official time servers and hopefully resolve any inaccuracies by going to the internet time tab, going to change settings, make sure this is selected, and then click on update now. For whatever reason, it's very common that you will get a failure message, sometimes repeatedly so. If that's the case, select the other time server and click update now. You may have to go back and forth a few times, play with this a bit, but eventually you should have a message that says your clock was successfully synchronized. When that happens, click on OK and then click OK to close this out. And if you want to, give it a few moments, maybe a minute or two, and refresh this page to see if your accuracy improved. It, it might not in my case because I did the uh, accuracy thing um, not long before this. So let's see. Your time is exact, so we fixed that 1.2 second discrepancy. So very good. Now, there's actually a way we can create a shortcut to that time adjustment area in Windows. Like I said, you should adjust the time or resolve any inaccuracies about every two weeks just in case. So to set up a shortcut, right click your desktop, go to New, Shortcut, type the location of the item. You're going to type in the same thing as before, time date dot CPL. And now you can type in any name you want for the shortcut. Use something that makes sense to you. For example, Windows time update or simply update time. Click finish and now you have this icon here you can double click on which will produce this date and time window and then you can go through the remaining steps to synchronize your time. If you find that you lose um, very little time within a two week period by all means check every three weeks every month or so on each computer would be different but it's perfectly natural and normal to have some uh, inaccuracy regarding your Windows time. And this helps keep your charts accurate with the candles plotting, the bar timer, and perhaps some other indicators and settings that you're using within the platform. There is so much more information available on how to trade classes, videos found at daytradetowin.com. Remember to check out the next mentorship date. And until next time, good trading.